yeah! Welcome to the Spirit War journey. Here we are at the end of time. Are you ready to challenge yourself to take a walk on the end of all that you know? Then join us. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's a good time to be a spiritual warrior. Oh. From Asia land to America, we are bringing you on the Fringe Radio Network, the Spirit War, spiritwarsmedia.com. You can support us on Patreon. We are going to endeavor to interview everyone from the mystic to the info war to the fringe to the you name it the mission missionaries world changers yes we're going to do it all and we're going to do it with the power of god because god is real so far he's done a lot of miracles and he's got us on a journey Like the patriarchs of old, like the stories in the Bible, those are the kind of men and women that we're going to be bringing on the show. So stay tuned on the Spare Wars of the radio, of the fringe, of the network, of the yeah! Oh yeah! Okay. That guy sounds insane. Hi, Laura, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right. Cool. Great to have you on. I apologize for some of the inconvenience today. We had a little emergency. Um, my wife is, is here, but she's lying down. She's had a little ear infection, and we went to the emergency room. So we got the we got the ear drops, and um, honey, you feeling better? She says she's feeling better. And she's so sweet. She just said... Sorry I woke you up so early. Real, real saint. That's so. good. She's feeling better. Yeah, she's feeling better, and just want to tell everybody um, who we're we're on with today. This is Laura Maxwell. Um, she is very, very expert in all things spiritualist, and has the most lovely Scottish accent ever. So I'm going to try not to. You do my terrible Scottish accent unless you try to do your wonderful American accent. And um, <laughs> really thankful for you to join us today. And how are you doing today? Yes, I'm doing fine. Uh, thank you. Thank you for asking me on to your show. It's an honor to, to join you. Well, the, the honor is all mine. And um, you've I think recently joined the Fringe Radio Network. We're honored to have you as well. So um, it would be really cool to just for the people who haven't heard you before to perhaps just give us a little bit of an introduction about uh, how you got this title, Ex Spiritist. It's just very fascinating. It's like, hmm, so how did that happen? So maybe you can just... Uh, Tell us a little bit about yourself for, for the new listeners, and then we'll ask you a lot of questions. A lot yeah, of questions. Sure. Um, well, you know, it's a, it, it was an honor to be asked to join the French Radio Network, and um, especially because you have such a, a wide audience. That's, you know, that's really wonderful that um, so many different people listening. Yeah, well, basically... I was brought up very much um, interested in the paranormal, the New Age, spiritualism, the esoteric, all of that stuff, and so was my mother. And, yeah, she had had some psychic experiences and some paranormal experiences when she was growing up, and so did I. Um, obviously, it can run in families, as you know, so. But my dad, he wasn't at all interested, and he didn't encourage our interests, so it wasn't until, in actual fact, my parents got there to then 
um, my mother, you know, decided to pursue her interest in these things. Of course, being fascinated with it all, I followed suit. And yeah, we, you know, the kind of usual thing, um, interested in astrology, um, any programs on the TV about ghost hunting, psychic phenomena, um, your network network bandwidth is low, um, and I think it's just shut off. Hmm. You're gonna have to get the higher speed. I don't know why it's yeah maybe um maybe we should just do a phone uh, um oh well that would be an international call. Uh, I could try calling you on Skype actually that would be um not too too much I think if I can turn off all these live transmissions um well we'll see let's let's try this um for a few more minutes and um if we can get through you know a small a small spat of bad internet i think we can get your uh get your story clear um maybe you sh can you turn off your video on on your end on the zoom there's a video button and that might that might help it a little bit Okay. Excellent. Thank you. And for people yeah. who are listening, feel welcome to join us on uh, Spreaker. We have uh, live on Fringe Radio Network uh, is where we conduct our uh, live interviews. However, a lot of people will usually end up using Facebook. So we, we try to get Facebook on there as well. And we welcome everyone to uh, join in on the discussion. So. I uh, want to welcome Derek Grosskirth and Iris Lee and Tracy Mihalek and uh, Renee Digest and Adam Starseed Bay. Thank you guys for popping in here. Um, Laura, one other thing we could possibly do is I could actually call you on Facebook Messenger, and that usually works pretty well. Um, would that be all right if I just call you on Facebook Messenger? It could be, but I don't always have... A great connection with Facebook, where, where we live, it's great, but we could, we could try Skype. Okay, let's try Skype. That, that sounds good. Okay, we're going to go ahead and switch to Skype. It's interesting because, um, you know, and I'll just talk as we're doing this. Um, my grandfather, and uh, okay, I'll call you one second. Okay, ending the meeting. Um, my grandfather was also interested in spiritualism and it opened up a lot of doors you know that that's one thing that um, it does tend to interest people because it's it's a real it's a reality you know there's there is a spiritual dimension and um, uh, Laura is going to delve into the realms of some of the scarier darker sides of that but of course on this show we're also trying to uh, explore the areas that are um, the positive side of that. So we're hoping that people can also um, find just the peace of God and, and a biblical uh, foundation, and as well as go into you know some of these other realms. So, all right, let's see if this works now. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey, that sounds good. All right. Okay, very good. I was just telling everyone that um, maybe your experiences, um, you might have tended to experience some of the darker spiritualist um, arenas. And uh, but you know, we as Christians, we're we're pursuing God's kingdom, and uh, there are there are supernatural experiences that are positive. Um, I I told someone at work today. You know, I'm almost like using reverse psychology evangelism because you tell people about the dark side and then they can't deny the reality of the dark side and then they're going to be forced to acknowledge that God exists, <laughs> you know. I don't know if, if that yeah. works for you, but... Yeah, I do the same, actually, Michael. I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. Well, you're sounding good and clear now, Laura, so... If you want to pick up where you left off. Okay. Well, 
Yeah, basically, um, you know, we were interested in the paranormal. We were interested in anything at all that would prove that people have, you know, certain powers. We were interested in life after death, all of that type of thing. So, yeah, my mother, she began to get books on the, the subject of communicating with so-called ghosts and guides and so on and she she was kind of developing herself as it was because she had obviously born with that ability if you like and um, one day she was out walking the dogs in the local park Dumb. Happened to be passing by, and, and he stopped her, and he said he could tell that she was a medium, and um, come join the spiritualist church in Glasgow because she would learn how to develop more, and all of that. She was, and said yes, and she started going along, and um, not that long after that, I started going along with her to. Do so we would go along to, you know, a lot of a lot of the meetings there and midweek meetings. We were encouraged to go to yoga classes, meditation mm. classes, and so on. Yeah. And you know, the the mediums would emphasise that yoga and meditation are two practices that really do open you up to spirits. They help to raise your vibration to be contacted by spirits so of course we gladly got involved in the yoga and the meditation and we went to on Sunday they had a service kind of looked like a church service in a sense you know you all went in Sunday morning we sat down on the, the pews just looking like a church and there would be a message they would be singing and then they would maybe they could read from from some book. It might be the the Bible. It could be any type of spiritual book, actually. And then the medium would want to give this to the congregation from the so-called dead, um, so-called deceased members or spirit guests, ascended masters, that type of thing. So mm. it was all very fascinating, and um, we very quickly became a very um, strong attendee and really actually thoroughly enjoyed it. I, they always do that, don't they? They always look at you and they say, oh, I can tell you're a medium. Oh, you have the special power. You know, oh, you should join our yoga class now. You should join our coven. I noticed there, there's kind of a salesman factor that they do. Like, they'll always, like, give you this sense of pride you know they'll they'll minister to your ego adam starcy bay has a question uh -huh. um uh are you a christian <laughs> so we have some new listeners here for you if so does she not feel or realize that when we give our life to christ that involves being spiritual and partaking in the spirit realm in our daily lives so what what do you feel like is your spiritual life now as a christian uh, do you feel like uh, God is still? Um, do you do you have a sense of His kind of presence, or do you have any like positive? This is a question I don't usually hear people ask you, so I'm I'm curious. Have you like ever seen angels or anything like that? And then I'll, I'll let you continue with your um with your testimony. Yeah, well, answer the the gentle. Yes, I am a, a Christian. And um, I came out of the New Age and Occult 20 plus years ago. So, um, walking with the Lord. And, and yes, um, a few months or so after I came to G, I um, did attend, I've always attended churches that, that do believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I, um, so yeah, I did speak in tongues. I still do speak in tongues. I have, um, you know, I have, have 
healed the sick, I've seen people healed of cancer, blindness, I've cast demons out. That that is maybe wow. the, the the area where um I have I have more of a passion for and mm-hmm. get used more is the the deliverance ministry. Some people might call it exorcism, but yeah, basically just, you know, about demons like like Jesus and the disciples did mm-hmm. and um like Jesus said, anyone who followed him can cast out demons. So, um, absolutely, it's not that I have, you know, uh, turned my back on believing that, that God gives supernatural gifts to those who follow him. I do uh, believe the New Testament is, is relevant to us today. That's excellent. Yes, I, I'm glad that's a great answer. Um, and, um, I'm just, uh, switching some internet things here, trying to, uh, route all power to, um, your phone call here so that there's no blips. Um, so, okay, so, um, when you were, am I coming in? Yeah, yeah. Have you actually ever seen angels before? Or had any like um, that's messages? That's a really interesting question, and um, one that I sometimes do mention in my interviews. Not ready to the start, but <laughs> brought up. Um, what I find is really an interesting phenomena within. Spe- it, I suppose I would call myself Pentecostal, charismatic, although I don't like labels, but. And I guess, you know, most of the churches I have been to over the last 20 years have been Pentecostal. What I have noticed, though, um, and I do think it's it's sad, and I do think it's... Uh, um, is that because um, Pentecostal Christians are so open to, to the Holy Spirit and, and to uh, wanting to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit and so on, that sometimes things happen that, well not sometimes, a lot of times things happen that they don't actually test to check if it definitely is the Holy Spirit. Now that might sound really cynical, Michael, but I'm saying this actually from experience because I've been there, I've been involved in it. I don't know how many times where where a a church has felt, you know, that the Holy Spirit was um, doing something and it wasn't it was Ash. It was the demonic. Find out, I would eventually need deliverance from it. Wow. <laughs> as well as other people there. So, you know, I've been through for thinking it was angels or thinking it was etc. And then these so called angels or whatever would slip up and say something. Go, oh, no, that's not biblical. And then you're like, oh man, how did I fall for that? Why did we mm. just assume because something supernatural happens, it must be of the law? <laughs> because it isn't, you know, so that's basically something that, and again, I've seen it a lot of times and I've been there myself, so I'm not trying to be, be judgmental to folks at all because I fell for that one myself. But even in, in churches, for example, where the preacher will say that um, a dead preacher is here, you know, like Smith Wigglesworth or someone. Oh. Uh, He's here to he's decide that this church will see revival in a few years' time or something like that. Yeah. You know, and honestly, Weird. I would be amazed that people that would just totally accept that. I could look around the room and see all the Christians just watching this, accepting it, and I'm sitting there yeah. thinking, oh my, there is no way this is a dead preacher. It, <laughs> it's uh, channeling demons, basically. Yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. There's a message here telling me to um, like passed away saints, and you know it, it's a very tricky thing because sometimes in the Bible, like it will say like, okay, well, um, if an angel or anyone else comes and preaches a different gospel, then they are to be a curse. It kind of tends to make you think that maybe sometimes there will be an angel or a departed saint or someone that will uh, tell you something. I had experiences with um, kind of a patron saint um, type of thing. I I sound kind of Catholic, but my story is long, so I I won't tell it right now, but 
I basically had this whole experience with um, Francis Xavier that was just, it was, I can't explain it except it was real and what he said came true and it was about, you know, preaching the gospel in Asia and, you know, so, but, you know, I think that people are, need to ex exercise a lot of caution um, in engaging the spiritual um, we interviewed Rick Joyner yesterday, and he, he did say that you should pursue prophecy. Prophecy is something that it says in the Bible we should pursue most of all. So I would definitely you know, recommend that people at least uh, have some level of openness with that. But, but that being said, I would love to hear some of the supernatural experiences that you had and with, with your mother's openness to that dimension and... Um, um, or if you want to re respond to that, Laura. And, and first of all, can you actually hear me now? Yeah. Yes, okay. I can hear you now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, that's good. Okay, good. Um, I suppose, Michael, I, I suppose with, with that one, Michael, um, I guess we, we have to disagree, agree to disagree on that one. Um, you know, I, I believe that when, the, the Bible was quite clear that when, someone dies they can't come back, back um and talk to us whether they were a christian or not um that they just cannot come back i believe the bible shows that um and i think as i say i felt for it myself when i went to some of these meetings and they thought it was a dead preacher or, or, or so on mm -hmm. um but but yes yeah, so because i think you know and there's been times where things like that have happened and i've tested it because I think folks are just so, you know, when I was involved in, in a, a church that was into stuff like talking to angels, and, and they were born again, of course, um, they, you know, felt that we could talk to our own angel, and they even had workshops in, you know, uh, developing this. And I went, even though I was like, oh my goodness, is this new age? And, but, but you trust your leaders, don't you? And I just thought, no, they're more clever than me. Um, you know, they, they know what they're doing. So I went along. But I say, when I eventually, it took a little while, but when I eventually felt, no, this is not biblical, um, I, I, I prayed before I went to one of the meetings. And it was when folks were sitting down and, and, and praying, so apparently asking God to... to um, talk to the angel as it was, as it were, I prayed and I asked Jesus, I tested it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, if it really was an angel. And the so-called image that I suddenly then got was a demonic image. And on the one hand, I was shocked, but on the other hand, I wasn't surprised, really. Um, and I, after that, I went, I found a, a couple that do deliverance ministry, even though I could do it myself, and even though I probably could have cast a demon out myself, because we can do self-deliverance, but I wanted that, you know, accountability, and I wanted to share it with someone else. So I went to this couple who do deliverance, and they said, yeah, they've heard of it before, a lot of Christians are falling for it nowadays, it's very popular just now, worldwide, actually. And yeah, I did repent of this, and yeah, a demon did um, was cast out of me. So yeah, it's one of these areas. But uh, yeah, I know the Bible says, "Do not um, do not detest prophecy. Do not let's not detest what's the one." Uh, it says, "Do, do not, not despise can't prophecy." Remember, but yeah, yeah, I think we do. We do yeah. need to be um, extremely careful and, and there's some there is some ministries you know some well-known ministries that, that have done things or are currently doing things that are so uh, consistent to me and, and one of them is where they are believing they're talking to angels on a regular basis yeah um and i just feel that is so dangerous because yeah you know one Really, the, the, we're, in, we're encouraged to speak to the Holy Spirit every day. We're not encouraged to sit down every day and, and speak to an angel. You don't see that right. in the Bible. And normally in the Bible, when an angel turns up, it's because it's given a really significant <laughs> message. Not because it's just it giving you daily messy. guidance on a daily yeah. basis. That just kind of a... It's not consistent, you know, with, with, with 
of the Bible. Um, mm-hmm. And there's ministries now that believe we can now talk to the great cloud of witnesses in Hebrews 11. You know, Hebrews 11, when you read that, that in the New Testament that says we should be able to talk to the great cloud of witnesses or, or preachers or John the Baptist or the Apostle Paul, you know, when God says necromancy is, is forbidden, he's not yeah. going to suddenly change his mind. But I think there's a lot of ministries today who say they have a special revelation now. Um, it's the last days the Holy Spirit has given them special revelations and because of that people can get deceived when special revelation isn't really going to contradict the New Testament. Well, that's so right. That, we I have to be that aware. Sums up my, my that's good. On that one. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. It's a good. It's a good conversation to have because these days a lot of people are engaging in the supernatural, and so we need to have, you know, like Sid Roth supernatural and a lot of the mystic people that I'm I'm in touch with. But I've noticed the difference is is quite um, obvious if you have discernment. But um, but I'm I just wanted to to just ask you that. And um, Adam Starcy Bay is, is saying, always question the spirits, discern the spirits. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is there is there anything um, recently that you've noticed, like has God been showing you um, with regards to just maybe your your walk with him, your your view on on the Bible? Has anything been kind of more or less on your heart as far as... Um, just your your view, uh, your doctrine, your um, your journey with God. Um, I, I think probably um, watching what what is happening in, in the world, um, and I do mean the the, the Christian world, um, uh, simply at, at the at the level of deception that is going on in the church. That does concern me because. So many churches now are uh, adopt and things like that, and, and calling it, you know, Christian yoga, um, or, or or even doing astral projection. But they feel that they're 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 not really doing astral projection. It's a it's yeah. a kind of gift of the Holy Spirit where Holy Spirit takes them out of the body every night and takes so that they can pray for the city and so on, and. Um, I've known folks who did that. I've been to meetings where folks did that. So again, I'm not being judgmental. I've had friends who, who went to these types of meetings, but and, and sometimes they'll say, but we discerned it was okay. But the funny thing is, if it's not biblical, it doesn't matter how your discernment feels. If it's not biblical, it's it's demonic, <laughs> you know? So that it breaks my heart to see so many churches getting into, as I say, yoga or, or so on, or thinking that they can talk to ghosts now that there's even Christians now who are getting into paranormal investigations and you know that that breaks my heart because not only one do they think they're talking to ghosts but some of them are even you know that that they'll be call themselves Christian paranormal investigators and yet they are still doing things like using EV peer recordings or even Ouija boards and so on, but they feel because they're doing it under the Holy Spirit, um, it'll be okay. And again, it's just, you know, you're asking me how do I I see that tie in with the Bible, and I just think, oh goodness, it really is the last days where, you know, even folks in the church are being led astray with doctrines of demons and the old cult and everything like that in the New Age is just, we never had this kind of stuff, you know, 50s i wasn't born in but but you know what i mean this in recent years it's really mushroomed to a great extent so what are um what kind of things can take place when you um go on a paranormal investigation are are you is that something that actually works like are people really contacting ghosts and demons is that or is that a hoax or in your experience what kind of um ex- what kind of things took place there? Um, in my experience, and, and, you know, even looking at it from the Bible, that it definitely worked. Um, maybe sometimes there are hoaxes. 
But, you know, the, the Bible is clear and, and the Old Test describes, it describes um, how folks were into paganism, they were into witchcraft, astrology, uh, spiritualism. You know, these things are, are listed, particularly in Deuteronomy 18, that there's a list there. And, of course, folks still do it today. Nothing's changed. The techniques have maybe changed a bit more, or they think it's more scientific because they're using um, certain equipment, like EVP recordings and, and all this. But it's the same uh, demons that are involved. And, yeah, it's very real. It's very powerful. And, you know, folks... New Agers, occultists, ghost hunters, um, the whole kind of realm of, of paranormal activity, all the different types of folks who are interested in, even, you know, like Wicca, um, darker, darker things like Satanism, demon worship and so on. Folks do these things because it does work, you know want their time, they're not going to waste their resources or their money in pursuing something that doesn't really work. You know, f- folks are into it because they know it's powerful uh, and they know they get results. So most times I would say these are genuine uh, phenomena uh, rather than actual hoaxes. Okay, so what's the difference between... Um, I know this is a really... This is a really um kind of a dumb sounding question but what's the difference between like a like a, a demonic spiritual encounter and a godly spiritual encounter for the people who maybe they're a little confused like maybe some people like to go to the seances or whatever and and they're doing it like you said because they they have there's an, something happens you know it's like wow ooh ah it's real ooh but um What's the difference between that kind of an encounter and a kind of an encounter where you really are praying in the Holy Spirit and meditating in the Holy Spirit and you and suddenly you have an experience that you can't deny that God is there that he is present like can you can you define the difference uh for people Well it's interesting because if you if you ask people and if, if you know you know folks who have been involved in, in mystical things paranormal and so on the way they can describe um, what happens and the, the feelings that they have for example can actually sound very similar if not identical to what a Christian can experience and feel and so that's how um, the whole thing about testing it biblically is so important you know, you, you, may, you may hear folks who say they saw a great light or they felt euphoria fill their being or they spoke in tongues or they were healed or, or, or whatever um, mm-hmm. whilst they were having an encounter. But Christians can say the exact same thing. The feeling can be identical. And that's why <laughs> discernment is so important. Especially, you know, like I just said there, even a Christian like myself, well-meaning Christian like like myself, wanting to follow Jesus, wanting to be open to the Holy Spirit, wanting to be open to, um, you know, what the Holy Spirit has in, in the ways of um, miracles and so on, and yet stumbling into a, a demonic counterfeit within the Christian church, feeling, that, feeling all the feelings that come along with that, and yeah, it felt exactly like the Holy Spirit. Um, I fell for it. Do you know what I'm saying? Even a Christian can get the exact same feelings, exact same phenomena, and it is actually demonic. So it's a hard one to pinpoint down and say, does it feel better being a Christian and experiencing the Holy Spirit as opposed to in the demonic realm? Because I would say there can be a very fine line, and at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's down to what does the Bible say about it? Okay, that's a good point. Like, the feelings can be there or here or whatever, but it's yeah, really yeah. true. Like, what does the Bible say? That is that is so important. Um, yeah. And I, that's like, that's like an ultimate 
this because you can have someone you can be following someone yeah. a preacher or, or someone and they're a lovely lo- lovely person godly person really close to Jesus you know person and all that but they can still be deceived because it, you know sadly it, it happens and the Bible's clear on it has yeah. happened um, so yeah well, um, it's it's important to to have this dialogue, and um, your testimonies um, are very extensive. Like you, you really get deep into um, your experiences. Um, is there anything in particular that caused you to uh, turn to the Lord and uh, to start to, rather than pursuing spiritualism, to start pursuing God? Yeah. Good question, Mark. You know, um, basically, my mother and I, we you know, we just loved it, and, and we were involved for for years. Um, but sometimes, every now and then, we would hear that some folks who were channelers or mediums, psychics, sometimes they would come fall into difficulty. Like um, they they might have something horrible happen to them spiritually. They might be attacked mm. by spirits and so on, and so this was always a bit of a concern, um, but, you know, we were told, well, you know, sometimes a bad spirit can get through, you know, it can be a hazard of the job, sometimes a bad spirit can get through, and, um, or maybe sometimes it could be that the person has bad karma, so they've attracted a kind of low-level spirit to them, um, or just their ascension symptoms are rising and um, it's not really a bad spirit coming to them, it's actually their own uh, higher self that's that's kind of reacting against their, their ascension and all of this type of thing. So there was always really um, sensible argument that's given that sounded logical to us and to explain these things and we were told, but you know, you have good spirit guides, we can see that you've got good karma for the two of you, so you should be okay don't worry about anything like that happening to you. But sadly, it did begin to happen to us, and we experienced the what folks might say, they describe it as sleep paralysis. We experienced these nightmares. We experienced um, being attacked by spirits and it being lied to by spirits, being sworn at, being <sighs> raped you know, sexually abused, uh, just horrendous stuff. And, of course, our friends, the other mediums and channelers, lovely, lovely people. I've got nothing against any of these people whatsoever. Lovely people um, tried their best to help us, but they couldn't. And um, what became the most surprising of all, it was bad enough this was happening, but even, Michael, our so-called spirit guides turned against us, even our so-called dead relatives turned against us and began to get abusive to us so this was really confusing Um, and we just didn't know what to think about this and um, we we didn't go to the the spiritualist church as often, we tried not to um, you know, we stopped doing yoga, we stopped doing meditation and so on, we stopped trying to channel spirits, but nothing was Worked. It actually just it just continued to uh, the point where um, you know it, it was just it was just horrendous, and we didn't know what to do, how to get help. And then eventually, my mother she went to her doctor for sleeping tablets to help her sleep at night because the spirits were even coming through during the night when she was trying to sleep. And um, I forgot to mention, Michael, you still there? Oh yeah, I'm here. I'm listening. Wow, the the okay. med. <laughs> so she forgot to take her medicine one night. Uh, that's cool. Interesting. No, what happened was um, um, she um, because we'd stopped meditating, we'd stopped doing yoga and all that. But the interesting thing is, you can stop these activities, but the demons don't like it when you stop, and oh. they don't want to lose you. So, 
My mother was getting dragged into trance against her will. Oh. She was being forced into trance when, when she was not even trying to meditate. Um, Whoa. So that they could come through her. And yeah, horrendous. And so one day this happened when she was in the kitchen and she was making uh, fried potatoes. You guys call them, we call them chips, you guys call them. Guys, she was she was cooking uh, yeah. fried potatoes and with the hot oil and all of that, and yeah. she got dragged into the trance. And of course, she didn't know what was happening. The whole kitchen ended up in, in flames, and wow. it was spreading to the living room. Someone thanked the, the the fire brigade, and they came and put it out. But the kitchen was completely it was a disaster, and mm. you know. We really got a fright because we realised, you know, we could have been killed. We got two dogs. We had two dogs and two cats in, and we thought, my goodness, you know, we all could have because of that. So stuff like that was happening. Um, my mother and I, we would go to the down down to the the village to go to the shops, and she would get picked up and just thrown onto the road. You know, uh, other people saw it, not just me. And um, that was extremely dangerous, obviously. So, you know, when she told this to the doctor, the doctor said, well, I don't believe in spirits or poltergeists or anything like that. Um, if you think you're hearing voices and, um, you know, these dangerous things are happening, then I believe you have uh, schizophrenia and I right. need to get you incarcerated in the local psychiatric hospital. Oh, gosh. It's like that's um, their their exactly answer is always happens. more drugs and you know wrong diagnosis like that. That's crazy. It's really sad, and it's sad to say that there is a lot of that in psychiatric hospitals. Um, you know, later on when I was a Christian, I went in there and myself. I've been visiting people in there, and I've saw. Um, I'm not saying everyone, but. Um, and there have been times where people have had deliverance and their psychosis has completely left and the doctor has discharged them from the hospital so you know it, it speaks for itself but of course at this at this time this was a great shock to all of us and um, she was in there for months now during the time she was in there I was in the uh, second year at university and I met a, a, a woman who was a born again Christian mm -hmm. and she was really friendly got talking to her I kind of thought she was crazy that you know because she believed the Bible and, and I thought as a new ager that um, I, I knew better than her basically you know <laughs> um, I thought Jesus was probably just a really ascended master or, or a really good medium or something as, as most new agers do so anyway she was really friendly and I told her about my mum and all that and she said she was praying and she invited me to her church and I really didn't want to go Michael at all I wasn't interested in the gospel I wasn't interested I didn't believe it I wasn't interested but she said to me this guy's coming who has the gift of prophecy and um, so I was like, wow, I, I didn't know that Christians did this. I thought it was only all the psychics that could, you know, predict the future. Yeah. So it's interesting that the Holy Spirit used that to, you know, get my attention. So, so uh, I went along so that the, the Christians there they were speaking in tongues. And this absolutely fascinated me. I had never heard tongues before. I was, I just felt like it was just a euphoric moment in my life and I thought it was a one-off experience and I thought I'll never hear that again. That was so weird. And my friend told me, oh, we speak in tongues every Sunday, you know, or every, every day we want to, what? I thought this was incredible. Um, so it's interesting that the Holy Spirit used that to get me attracted um, in, the, in the church and in what they had to say. So that, that night, that guy prophesied to, to some folks, and he prophesied to me as well. And um, 
I didn't believe he was prophesying from the Holy Spirit. Um, it sounds funny now, Michael, but I just thought the guy had a spirit guide. <laughs> you know? Wow. And then uh, that he was psychic and that he was just, it was a spirit guide telling him this information. So. Oh, man. But, yeah, but basically, what happened though, Michael, when I went home that night, I went home, went into my apartment, and really, I won't go into details, but I really thought the demons would kill me that night. They were furious, absolutely raging mad that I had went to a Christian church and um, had heard the gospel. Wow. And I was terrified. I kept the lights on all night. And interestingly enough, during the day though, I had been clearing out stuff. I was clearing out clothes and old books and things like that. And I had a bag ready to take to a charity shop the next day. Now this bag was sitting right at the door. And when I came in the apartment on the top of the bag, I hadn't thought about it earlier, but right on the top of the bag there was a Bible. So it caught my eye. And I thought, oh, Maybe I shouldn't put that to the charity shop after all. So I took I took the Bible and um, took it into my bedroom. And my, my husband, he was working in the hospital that night, so I was totally alone. And, um, yeah, I, I prayed. I prayed. So, you know, God, if Jesus is real, please, please show me. And yeah. please show me if what I've been involved in is real or, or if it's false um, because I want the truth now the interesting thing is Michael I did not want to become a Christian <laughs> okay I really didn't want to um, I suppose um, my idea of Christianity was um, distorted and I only ever thought of you know the bad things we hear that some Christians do and so on so it was like the last thing I wanted to do was actually become a Christian so, and yet I knew, do you know what, if this is the truth, then I need to follow it. Yeah. If it's the truth, yeah. I've got to whether I want to or not, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah, I prayed that prayer and, and, you know, that's when the demonic began to react. And I had a very bad night. Let's put it that way. And um, during the night, I kept seeing the face of this psychic woman. And Interesting. She, she called herself a Roman Egyptian, and she she would um, come around the neighbourhood about once a year and, and sell little pieces of jewellery or, or little knickknacks, and she would read your palm or, or just read your fortune. I could not get her face, kept coming to my mind. So I thought, why do I want to see her? You know, I'm thinking of breaking away from all this stuff. Why do I want to see her? Well, the very next day, the doorbell rang and it was her. Oh, and wow. she said, um, I've just become a born-again Christian. My oh, wow. psychic abilities, they were all demonic. They've all stopped. I've had the demons cast out me. I can't do any of that psychic phenomena anymore. And the Holy Spirit woke me up today, told me to come to you and tell you that you are about to go on the right path that Jesus is the truth. Praise God. So wow. I was like, oh, wow. So I could not get her in the door quick enough. I, I took her in the apartment. Um, she spoke to me. I still wasn't like totally convinced yet. Obviously, I had a lot going through my head, but um, I really believe the Holy Spirit knew that he had to send a, an ex-medium to me um, for me to, to really listen, I think, to, to, to get the message across. And, yeah, within a, a few days, I basically had, a, a, I believe, a divine revelation that Jesus Christ really is the Messiah, that he was not just a reincarnated um, one of these saviour gods from the mystery religions. He wasn't just a reincarnation of um, you know, one of the pagan gods. He really is the saviour. He really is 
the Messiah, and that those pagan gods were actually false gods, demons, just like the Bible describes them. So, yeah, I literally asked Jesus into my heart, like, a few days after uh, meeting that woman. How fascinating that you would be introduced to the Lord by an ex- medium as well and that's why i'm i'm listening to you and we have some people that i know that uh derek grosskirth is is there or at least his icon is and andrew boham is is listening or he was listening and these are people literally that we're talking with who who um are not practicing um the occult but are interacting with people who are astrologers or Um, these kind of, you know, people that do Kundalini or who dabble around, you know, the new age, you know, Laura Max, Laura Maxwell, sorry, Laura Eisenhower, Laura Eisenhower, the Dwight L. Eisenhower's granddaughter is a pretty leading voice in the new age. And, um, it's just, there's so, there's so many people that follow these people so that when you can reach out to them. You might be speaking to some of their audience. Maybe you won't win the the leader head honcho, but when your voice is out there sharing this information, um, I believe that it, it is something that can um, be as a light in the darkness to help people who are kind of uh, just yeah. you know they're they're lost. Yeah. You know, absolutely, Michael. And, and you know, um, as I say, I came out of it all. Of- about 20 years ago, but in recent years we saw Stephen Bankars, who was a very well-known New Ager, and Doreen, um, Doreen Virtue also, she was a well-known New Ager. They came to the Lord and, um, you know, they've been sharing their stories too. And I know that, that, that you know, the average person who's perhaps into New Age or, or um, yoga or meditation and so on, might think we we sound totally crazy, but I would really urge you just to consider what we do have to say because you know folks who are into the paranormal, new age, or anything like that, they tend to be really open minded people. They tend to be really intelligent people and very open minded, and uh, and therefore I would say you know consider what we have to say. And for example, you know you spoke about it's interesting an ex medium. Uh, came to me yeah absolutely and, and it was when I went back to that church that uh, my, my friend had invited me to where they were speaking in tongues and so on I met there a, a woman who was another ex-medium and um, spoke to her and you know she said the same type of thing to me what is interesting is that I went through deliverance and that's where uh, Christians cast demons out of you and the demons that the the, the so called spirits that I thought um, were my friends, if you like, had um, somehow got. I had demons inside me, basically. I know it sounds horrendous, but it's true. And I had a lot of deliverance whilst they all came out. And interestingly, just like the Roman Gypsy said, her psychic abilities all left when she had the demons cast out. So, you know. Some folks say, yeah, but I was born psychic. My grandma was psychic. Nothing to do with demons. But actually it is, and the Bible shows that it is, and it shows that there are ancestral curses that do follow down the families, um, and that's why folks uh, have it. So, you know, the proof is in the pudding that the the psychic abilities suddenly stop when the demons are, are, are cast out. For example, I had deliverance from yoga, literally had demons of yoga come out of me and I was rolling like a snake which was horrifying but it was true and you know I wouldn't make that up folks might say oh, well you were just hysterical it was auto suggestion no you know you can tell when something's going on inside your body and it's coming out you know um, exorcism isn't something you can just imagine you, you can feel it and now you know being I've cast demons out of people myself now over the last 20 years and again like that you can feel it happening you know that it's happening it's not just uh, you know auto suggestion but and yeah and I know that some folks listening as you say you know they might be they might be 
stuff like this themselves and they might think that's absolutely ridiculous no such thing as Satan, no such thing as demons, what a load of nonsense and I can understand them thinking that because I totally believe that too but um, if you look at some folks like famous Satanists for example you have people like folks probably heard of them, you know Alistair Crowley, you have folks like um, Antoine LaVey folks who founded the Church of, of Satan, folks who were uh, admitted um, that they were Satanists, admitted that, that folks who believed in Lucifer and, and met him as a dark angel. And the interesting thing about these folks is that they have said, and it's even in their books and so on, so folks can check it out, you know, for example, I won't even, I don't want to mention the book because I don't want them to buy it, but these guys have admitted that fascinating, this is a fascinating fact, I think, Michael, they say that the whole uh, gamut of, of New Age beliefs and activities and practices, actually um, New Agers stole that from Satanism, that it was um, Satan's games, if you like, and it, it moved from the Satanic realm into the, 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 the New Age realm, and that most New Agers don't even realise this is um, from Satan, and that, that I think, is is. is really quite sad that, that they don't, don't realise it, but it's true, you know, um, a way back years ago, yoga was only, a way back, really only practised by occultists or the yogis themselves, and, you know, if you do look at the, the, the old teachings of the yogis, they would say that yoga was exactly to open you up spiritually, it was to yoke you with the so-called universal spirit. It was to open you up to spirit entities, um, you know, and um, Alistair Crowley wrote a book on yoga, he was a Satanist and he even said he deliberately practiced yoga because he knew he was infested with more demons by doing it. So, you know, <laughs> not that we want to take a Satanist point of view too seriously, but it's interesting that really what they're saying is exactly what the Bible is saying, that... Um, these things are actually demonic. When when you're speaking, I, I get the verse, um, you know, be be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. And uh, also we wrestle against these powers, principalities in high places. Um, really an interesting fact about Aleister Crowley that um, we talked about in the show with William Ramsey recently with Johnny Iron and William Ramsey and I had a little discourse and um, Aleister Crowley actually is quoted um, directly confronting G.K. Chesterton who was one of the very strong Christians in the time before World War II that was just a, a, a fighter for the faith and it, it's interesting that a man like Crowley who was so open to the spirit world and was just opening himself to demons um, would look at a man of faith and rather than just like in all demonic, you know, like, you know, you see some possessed maniac on the street cursing you. He actually looked at Chesterton and admired him and was like, you're on the opposite camp from me, but I see that you are one of the last defenders of the faith. Um, and, and they almost had like a mutual understanding of each other, like, Crowley, the symbol of Satanism, and then Chesterton, the symbol of Christianity, to this day, like, it's hands down, Chesterton has helped us to define a lot of the, the Christian, um, just the whole dialogue that we have now, it's whether you're Protestant or, or whatever denomination, but now today we are getting into a, this engaging with the enemy and the spiritualism, and what, what kind of um, people are out there are you interested in reaching do you think that you can touch spiritualists the best are you do you find that the lord uses you to bring those people out of that um because i already feel a lot of clarity just listening to your voice like you know putting things in order you know don't do yoga you know watch out for this uh you know channeling things and and i don't disagree with you on anything i just i'm on a journey myself i'm also open to um, even having myself made mistakes. I've been through all kinds of different, you know, countries, Asia. I've 
definitely had experiences with poltergeists and, and spirits and appearing in my room uh, in China. Um, you know, I, I don't understand all of it. Uh, I'm not even going to pretend to be a teacher on any of this stuff. I'm just kind of um, learning, um, kind of learning. I hope I'm really learning. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, that was a mouthful. Yeah. But, but yeah, do you feel like you're reaching out to a lot of um, spiritists that are presently kind of embroiled and stuck in this sort of new age world. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, when, when I first came to Jesus, um, I instantly wanted to tell everyone I knew, all the spiritualists, all the medium friends that I had. And, um, you know, I prayed and I, and I asked the Lord to confirm to me what my calling was because this was certainly my passion and, and I, I really, I was hoping it, it was my calling and basically the next day I went into university and that one day I met about five people in that one day who were in various types of occult and this was me, you know near, nearly at the, the end of my second year at uni and I'd been there obviously for two years and that had never happened and yet this happened all in the one day and they weren't, it wasn't just, you know, spiritualism, there was black magic, there was a, a mix of things, and that was 20 plus years ago. So initially, yeah, um, it, it was definitely the, the, the folks who were spiritualists or channelers or psychics, or it, it basically anybody who feels they're in contact with entities, even whether it might be they feel it's aliens or star gods or Pleiadians or, you know, whatever. That was my, my main passion um, in the start. But I also did have a heart for just any kind of occultic um, folks into any kind of occult activity, really. So, and that's really kind of a played out, Michael, because in those years, um, it's not just the, the obvious, which would be, yeah, you know, a medium. It's not just folks like that who contact me. It's... Um, folks into all kind of stuff um, I, I have had even folks into I know there's different types of Satanism, Satanism by the way and I don't mean to um, blanket that expression all in the one, some Satanists you know they don't even believe he is an entity and they don't do evil stuff per se but I'm talking the hardcore type of Satanists who do, um, do commit evil crimes and that you know, I've had people like that contact me. I've, it's just been quite a wide range, which is interesting because you might think, is it just mediums? Uh, but no, no, it's really the spectrum. And I think perhaps, Michael, that's just because, you know, when I do um, write a little article or, or when I do a little talk somewhere, I do try and cover, you know, various topics and that something I, 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 I say um, clicks with someone. So, yeah, you know, whatever that may be, um, different folks. Basically, as far as I'm concerned, you know, no one is, is beyond changing and, and coming to Jesus Christ and leaving the kind of life they've been in. doesn't matter what they've been in, whether they've been a, a New Ager, whether they've been a Satanist, or, you know, whether they've been a Luciferian, you know, if they're even in the elite, you know, the Illuminati, whatever, you know, the Apostle Paul, after all, he, he used to go out there and kill Christians, <laughs> you know, he loved killing Christians before he met Jesus, so that, that's what I'm really all about, is just letting folks know it doesn't matter what, because sometimes, Michael, folks contact me and they say, oh, but you don't understand, Lord, I've been so bad person, the stuff I've done, but I have the joy of saying to them that, you know, Jesus Christ died for everyone. Does not matter how you're the most evil person on this planet. Jesus Christ died for you. Doesn't matter, you know, what you think about yourself. He died for you. He is the Savior. His blood can cleanse you. And sometimes folks are amazed when they hear that because they think, and they've told me, I thought I was beyond redemption, Laura. You know, I, I really knew I was going to hell and, and, and that was my lot. So, yeah, I hope that answer. Sorry, I blabbed on a bit there. <laughs> We we have you on to to blab on and on and it's not blab it's it's um, key, huh? 
It's okay. fab. My oh. wife is listening, and, and she says it's fab. I'm trying to get her on. She's just being, being shy. Honey, you're gonna, I need my co-host here, honey. But um, it's key because the thing is there's a lot, like, the airwaves are dominated by the devil. You know, that's what the Bible says, unless I'm, unless I'm interpreting that wrong. Um, we are engaging in a spiritual warfare battle to bring the truth forward and to basically invade every um, medium in the world. That's funny that they use the same, the same word, you know, medium, uh, to bring the truth out. And when you have the truth, you know, it's all it takes is one L.A. Marzulli episode, you know, on a Coast to Coast show, or uh, I think it was um, L.A. Marzulli was somewhere speaking, and Dory Etheridge, who also just joined the Fringe Radio Network, um, she listened to that and she heard about the Genesis six angels and then she decided to become a Christian and we, we got, we had her testimony recently. Okay. We have a question from Bethany Lee. Uh, do you believe that people only go to heaven or hell when they die or do some people roam the earth and become what people call ghosts? Curious because of the, a spirit I encountered that came to me in human form. Wow. Thank you, Bethany. Well, yeah, thank you, Bethany. That that's a really good question, Bethany, and I, I'm so glad you asked that. Um, yeah, I believe that the Bible shows people when they die they go to either heaven or hell, and that the so-called phenomena of bound spirits or uh, trapped spirits or ghosts um, is actually done more counterfeit. And that, yeah, it can be so, so real. You know, I was a spiritualist, so I was involved in that, so I know what you mean. It can be so real. But um, the Bible does show that they either go to heaven or they go to hell. And, you know, I've met folks, even, you know, some folks who uh, believe in earthbound spirits and um, even um, folks who uh, they have a deliverance ministry where they cast out demons, that's what they do and yet they have um, got into this themselves where they think they are going along to a haunted place and they're helping the, the dead ghosts move over as it is, as it, as it were but can I share a little personal thing that happened that might um, help illustrate uh, my point a wee bit better um, years back I was, uh, I was going to a conference a Christian conference, and uh, this guy came up to me and said, "Your um, your ministry is also going to be helping um, people in the prophetic and the deliverance ministries because you know the insight that I've got because of my experience is going to help them because many of them are, are deceived." Now, I, at first, I was shocked, Michael, because I thought, "Oh my goodness, what do you mean? There's people in the prophetic ministry that are deceived?" or the deliverance minister that are deceived, I was shocked um, at this. But basically, five minutes after that, I went back into the conference and then sat beside this guy, and this guy got talking to me, and he said, I'm a deliverance minister, and then he started telling me part of his ministry involves finding uh, these so-called earthbound spirits and helping them on to Jesus, helping them on to the light. So my jaw nearly dropped open, and I was like, oh boy. So I was really polite and really nice and everything, um, and said to the guy, oh my goodness, I need to tell you you know, my opinion on that. And I shared with him, and I said, you know, it doesn't matter if you've been born again for 50, 50 years and you've been in a successful ministry used of the Lord greatly. If you go and talk to a spirit and start talking to it, thinking it's an earthbound spirit, thinking it needs to go to Jesus, it'll quite happily uh, go along with whatever you're saying and um, pretend to be a, a dead relative. I said, but please, the next time you're in that situation, test it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and I think you'll be surprised what happened. So he listened to him and he said, right, I'll do that. We never saw up details, so I don't know what came of him, but I have since met other people 
in the deliverance ministry who have been doing the same thing. And I said to them, please, please test it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, um, I believe you'll see it morph into a demon and you'll realise it's not really a, a ghost. And I have had people get back to me and tell me yes and yes. And um, they were humble enough to say, I realise I got to see Flora, I got myself deliverance ministry and I got the demon of, I don't know what it was, a demon of error or whatever cast out of them. Um, you know, it's just, and you know, you can argue around all different scriptures, even some of these folks do that, but if you even think about it at a kind of basic level, if someone dies, Jesus, Jesus is in control. How on earth could Jesus lose a spirit? Jesus knows instantly, you know, what person is about to go to heaven or what person is about to go to hell. Do you really think he's going to lose a spirit and that spirit ends up earthbound? I mean, God isn't blind. He, he knows the people who have just died. So they can't get lost and, and, and you know, wander about the earth. It, it actually it makes no sense. Um, so... Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's excellent. It. Excellent um, advice. And I... I concur and it's just it's something that it's so good that we're having this forum right now we have some really intelligent people listening our audience is incredibly um well-versed and experienced people that uh i'm i am so thankful for you guys and um i hope that you'll go and listen to uh, laura's other talks and continue to follow her shows uh tracy mihalek has a question what if you do test and one is clearly a demon and the other isn't um, I have experienced that one. I don't know everything, but I would like her feedback. There was actually retaliation when I preached the gospel to the quote-unquote human stuck with the demon. I don't really know, just trying to be led by the Spirit. Okay, so the question again was, what, do you do, how, what if you test it, one is clearly a demon and the other isn't? I, maybe, um, does that make yeah, sense? Uh, okay. I understand. I'm Okay. Understand totally. Sorry, what was her name, Tracy? Uh, yes, Tracy Mihalek. Is her name Tracy? Thank you, Tracy. Uh, uh, that's an excellent question. Um, and I know exactly what you're talking about, and I have encountered this too. Um, it's a uh, it's it's a different tactic, I believe, by demons to confuse folks uh, further and make them think that sometimes it really is a demon. Sometimes it really is a dead person, so I, I know what you're saying. Um, but again, um, what I have found is when folks have done this, I've spoke with intimately um, enough. Um, I believe the reason for that is because the person um, still needs the living ministry themselves. Um, and please don't feel in any way ashamed about that whatsoever at all. It is a completely normal thing. Jesus and the disciples cast demons out all the time. You know, we could be doing it all the time too. I've had demons cast out me. I can put my hand up and admit that. Nothing to be ashamed of not at all. So, but folks who have been involved in, in stuff or maybe inherited it down the family line or maybe have um, um, thought they've encountered ghosts in the past, will actually need deliverance and until they get deliverance this is an interesting thing until they get, get um, deliverance these demons can still uh, trick them and lie to them and pretend to be a real ghost when they're not uh, remember I said earlier that the Roman Egyptian who came to my door and she had told me that she had her um, she had the demons cast out of her and all her psychic were gone you know when someone is completely free of uh, the, the demonic, they can, if you like, like, test the spirits in Jesus' name and it will work. If you like, what I'm basically saying is there's a condition that testing the spirits in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth will work, but condition being that first of all, um, we are folks who have already went through a lot of deliverance ourselves. We, we are uh, clean and that we are... Um, close to Jesus. To give an, now that might sound like a cop-out, but to give a little example, if I may, please, Michael, 
Um, for example, I was listening to a, a testimony recently from a former Satanist. She was born into it and her family were all involved in it. And um, she she basically came to Jesus because she saw an incredible phenomenon. And that was that over the years, her and her uh, cousin, they particularly um, preferred to sacrifice Christians when they were doing what they do. And But they noticed that some of them, and they were born again Christians, by the way, they were, you know, maybe Christian in, in name only, they were people who genuinely did follow the Lord Jesus and believe in him. But she said that they would often find that sometimes the, the, the Christians that they were torturing uh, and raping and so on would react in a way just like any other person would do. You know, wow. they, they did not seem to have any um, protection, if you like, or any uh, power against it. Amazing. She well, said, thank. Sometimes though, okay. they would continue. Sorry. Yeah, I, I thought you were. I thought you were done. Go, continue. Sometimes, sometimes they would be. They would abduct Christians who, um, when they began the torture, or, or even before they began the torture, the Christians' face would light up, and they would feel this presence around the Christian. The, you know, obviously it was the presence of God there, coming to protect the Christian, and. The Christian, one of the things they would often say, they would look up, they would look up with their hands up in the air and their face would be beaming and they would say, oh Jesus, you've come for me. And wow, the Christian would suddenly drop dead because Jesus just took that Christian away before they could even torture him or her. And you might say, well why is that? Why is it some Christians that worked for and some it didn't work for, if you like, they were all born again? And I believe it's because those were were, were the, the Christians who had probably had a lot of deliverance in their life, any demons were cast out of them, they were totally free from the demonic therefore the power of Christ was much more powerful through them, the power of Christ his presence came strongly um, and I think someone like that if they encountered a so ghost and tested it in Jesus' name there would be no way that demon could pretend to be a ghost um, uh, and um, you know the test, if you like, would, would therefore work for that person where it maybe doesn't work for um, another Christian, if that makes sense. Again, a long answer. <laughs> thank you so much, um, Laura, and thank you, Bethany, and thank, thank you, that Tracy. Answers, no, great answer. Um, so, uh, we have another question um, from Bethany. Do people who kill themselves go to heaven if they know God? I have a lot of family members who took their own lives. Oh, sorry to hear that, Bethany, and we'd like to hear Laura's take on that. I'm so sorry to hear that, Bethany. I really am. Um, my mother killed herself too, and um, I believe I believe they do if, if they knew Jesus, because you know Jesus forgives all our sins. I'm not saying that was God's plan for her life. I'm sure Jesus uh, would have longed for the person to, 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 to live um, and not die prematurely, but um, I, I do believe that um, they, they go to, to be with the Lord if, if, they, if they know him. Um, but I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's Bless you, Bethany. That's terrible. Yeah, a lot of... There's been a lot of demonic attacks recently, Laura. I've I've uh, met quite a few people, also friends that were in the uh, the Family International cult that did dabble quite a bit with this. Um, a lot of people uh, lost kids, lost uh, friends, just very oddly in the last um, uh, couple months, actually. So it's been it's been a very intense time, and uh, I thank you for those words um, of hope for. For those people, I, I don't think we ever need to despair for people. It just it's a sad thing when someone doesn't complete their uh, their journey in the way that I just I also feel like the main sadness is the fact that they they missed out. You know, they have a, a lot more to do. It wasn't God's plan, yeah. but I don't think He's going to send them to hell for that. I think it's yeah, I, I, I agree. agree. Yeah. 
Well, we um, we had yeah. a lot of questions. Is, was there anything else that you wanted to share, like in the last maybe ten minutes or so, or if, if you had? I just want to thank you again for your time, though, and, and putting up with our um, our internet issues here. We just got DSL, and it's still it's still wonky. So we're gonna have to keep working on it. Um, one thing I I don't know if you've ever heard of Rick Joyner, but I just had the chance to speak with him, and you know he was talking about. Um, some of his his prophecies and his uh, visions and one of those visions is is quite interesting a lot of christians would be um drinking the vomit of demons thinking it was the holy spirit and then they would turn around and start attacking other christians and i thought that was interesting because i've seen that happen a lot with false christians rising up i would almost rather deal with witches and uh spiritists than false christians that think they're hearing from the holy spirit but they're deceived and then they come after you have you ever had that problem with um false christians and people uh saying you know that you're you're a liar or you know trying to expose laura maxwell dot com <laughs> laura maxwell exposed or something <laughs> Well, people who know me know me. You know, people obviously, um, Christians in Scotland particularly know me better. Um, I've not had, um, I don't think, I can't remember, but I don't think I've had like other ministries um, attacking me or anything like that. I've maybe had people who perhaps, you know, don't agree with some things that I've said, but then, hey, that's that's uh, common, we all get that, don't we, you know, um, I don't think so, uh, yeah, I think maybe it's been, it's been more Christians who will say something like they don't believe the gift of tongues okay. is from the Holy Spirit, you know, that's maybe the type of attack that I would maybe get more um, from Christians, but, but yeah, sometimes they can be, um, like anyone else, I suppose, can't they? They can be a bit cruel at times. And um, But yeah, Jesus wasn't cruel to folks. So even if we disagree and stuff, you know, um, we've got to treat each other with love and respect. I think that's uh, quite key. But but there is something I would like to share, Michael, before we finish. Please. Yes, that, that dear lady who, who, who um, sent a question earlier there um, my, going back to my mother's story she she was in the psychiatric hospital and, and uh, of course by this time I had become a Christian and we were praying for my mum and um, she she got out of the, the psychiatric hospital and she went back home because there had been improvement as far as the psychiatrists were, were concerned you know but when she got back home, um, oh, she came to the Lord. Sorry, I forgot to say that. She did come to the Lord too. And she, you know, also realized that the spiritualism was demonic and all of that. So she came to Jesus too. She uh, came to the church that I was going to and, and, and she was loving that. But there were still demons in her apartment. And the, the, the church, the pastor, he was quite a young guy, he was new in the ministry, and at that time in his life he thought that if you're a Christian now, you cannot be bothered by demons in any way, and you certainly shouldn't have demons in your apartment, uh, therefore he just assumed my mother was mentally ill, and that she was lying about having demons in the apartment. Now, I knew that, 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 that she wasn't mentally ill because I'd been in her apartment and I saw the same phenomena. And in fact, in my own apartment, I was still being attacked by demons myself. So I told oh, wow. the pastor this and he said, if you think you're being attacked by demons, you can't be because you're now born again. Therefore, you're mentally ill too. And I, I, I want to talk to your husband because you need to go into the psychiatric hospital too. So... Michael, I was terrified, and I knew I wasn't mentally ill. My husband knew, and um, but sadly, what happened was my mum did not get the help. That pastor I found out in recent years. That pastor um, does now 
now have a deliverance ministry. He now knows that Christians can have demons, and he now, him and his church now do cast demons out. Christians, so that's wonderful. Perhaps my mother's story um, helps him see that, you know. Anyway, my mother did not get the help, and although she was now a born again Christian, there was no deliverance ministry. Nobody went there to cast the demons out, Jesus' name. And my dear mother had enough of the torture of getting attacked and, and raped by these demons. She actually killed herself. You know. And I, I'm, I feel for you, and I, I know that you know in battle and in war there are misjudgments, and people make the wrong, um, the wrong call, and that, you know, that really does kind of clear things up, especially for all of us to be understanding of people, to not throw the blame on someone that maybe, you know, it was just too much and they took their life. Oftentimes there's a lot going on, and there was a lot of other hands involved, and. Um, or a lack of, of love. And so, I mean, there's there's just everything, you know, Jesus says not to judge before the time. So, um, but I, I did want to mention there's there's an interview that we did uh, with um, another host of the French Radio Network, um, uh, Leonard Olivares, with Jerry Marzinski, who used to work in psychiatric hospitals, and he wasn't really doing it as a Christian, he's a PhD. Um, we're going to interview him again, hopefully soon. Um, but he has a very, very interesting talk where he basically came to the conclusion, Jerry Marzinski, that um, these people in the psychiatric schizophrenia sectors of these of these hospitals and prisons, especially, were indeed being possessed by extra personalities that were were like separate from the person so it wasn't just in their head it was definitely a being and he he had his yeah, awakening yeah. Uh, while researching this and he's a very expert man at his field um, yeah. I just I would use that interview and, and his talks uh, Jerry Marzinski the presence in other worlds in schizophrenics to help people to understand that the doctors don't know what they're doing, really. They give you medication and they throw you in the prison hospital, but they have no idea. Laura, your testimony is very important because you're helping people to know uh, what's really going on here. So I want to thank you again for um, for helping yeah. to clarify that. And you know, Michael, I've got my own radio show and I interviewed a guy, Andrew Goodwin. And he was a schizophrenic. He suffered badly with it for years until he met a Christian. He gave his life to Jesus. The Christian cast the demon out of him and schizophrenia totally left and he's never been ill since. You know, praise God, um, we can be healed from anything. But, and you know, my mother's story just makes me all the more keen to, to, to tell Christians, you know, that, that, hey, Christians can have demons. Don't get ashamed about it. Don't get upset about it cast them out um, and get the person free and then they won't maybe won't commit suicide They'd like so many um, Christians even do who have been involved in the occult and have not got free from it the deliverance ministry is so badly needed in the church today absolutely I, I really I think that the deliverance ministry is something that has been neglected so much and and maybe have you ever heard of my grandfather don basham did you ever see any of his books on deliverance i've heard his name um but but forgive me i don't really remember i, I may have read his books i don't know i just know that i know his name um I, i'm not i don't have a great memory i'm sorry he um no it's fine he worked with Derek prince uh Derek prince is is more well known but um they okay, together. Yeah, I know the, I know the Prince, yeah. Yeah, they they uh really pioneered a lot That's of the awesome. deliverance ministry back in the seventies and eighties. Yeah, totally. I, I I believe that when I first got saved, and uh, you know realized that deliverance was needed by myself, I believe that Derek Prince was one of the first authors that I did get a book about it from. Yeah really recommended teaching it's very foundational you know like sometimes we on the fringe we like to go as far as we possibly can and we 
you know, we can get into trouble sometimes. But there's always Derek Prince and Don Basham and Ern Baxter to uh, help get your foundation strong. So, Laura, I want to thank you for your time. Um, this has been amazing to get to speak with you. Would you like to speak um, offline briefly, and then we'll uh, I'll let you I'll let you get to bed. It's probably getting late over there in Scotland, but it's it's really cool to get to yeah, uh, that, make this connection. That would be lovely, Michael. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you everybody for listening, and, and we thank will. You so much. Thank you. Yes, thank you everyone for for um, joining us. And we will see you again next time. God bless you. you here on a rainy night looking so fancy are those new shoes <laughs> well I guess I could introduce myself I'm uh, happen to be a, an American white male yes an effing white male here on the internet uh, the fringe radio network to be exact I've seen my share of things in life I guess Judging from the look in your eye, I can tell you've seen a share of things yourself. Well, I'd just like to thank my friend Johnny Iron for bringing us here on the Spirit Wars show, where we can meet a friend or two, maybe make a new friend, maybe learn about a new thing, (laughs) maybe discuss some nightmarish things too well we're not going to ruin this nice evening with any of those kind of stories but from the satanic ritual abuse victims and the disassociative identity disorder programs of the new world order illuminati nightmares to the peaceful placid waters of the 
river of life, the new Jerusalem. We've got it all. We've come from the dregs of society to the creme de la creme, from the weird sex cults to the stodgy old Baptist church down the street. And you can support us on Patreon. You can find our work on spiritwarsmedia.com. I'd like to thank our patrons on Patreon, and I'd like to thank you, the listener, for your prayers. We're going to make it, you and I, tonight. So just sit back, pour yourself a cocktail, and, and let's journey on. God bless you. And this is NPR's Morning Edition. Do you have trouble sleeping at night? Do your glasses fog up when you read? Are you tired of picking up your doggie's doo-doo in the park? Do you wish you were fabulously rich right now? Would you like to make a billion dollars in one day? Have you ever wondered what is the meaning of Stonehenge? Do you look for love in all the wrong places? Does your toilet get clogged every time you go number two? Well, maybe you should do something about that. Or not. I don't care. But wait, I have more questions. Do you lie in bed late at night wondering, why do men have nipples? Why is polygamy a bad idea? If you were to kill a person and stuff their body into a bag and throw it in the river, would it be morally reprehensible not to turn yourself into the police? Oh wait, no, Daniel, edit that one out. But if you are looking for some spiritually enriching podcasting and video interviews with some of the most whacked out Christians you'll ever meet, you've come to the right place. The Fringe Radio Network. Oh! On the Fringe, we are pioneering the legal limits of mystical expressions of but, the Christian faith. But I thought that all this Christian mysticism sounds weird and new to me. It's a little bit heretical, no? My pastor says not to listen to any of that stuff. He always says, That kind of Christianity is the devil. What's up? Yes, that's right. The Fringe Battle Starship is piloted by our master and commander, the Lord Jesus Christ. All the contributors to the Fringe are on a mission as they set out piloting their own hovercraft into the realms of this matrix. We are on a quest to bring the truth of Jesus back into the conversation in a world gone mad with flat earth conspiracies and gripped by fear of the Illuminati. But if I was Johnny Iron of the Iron Show, ironshow.com, then I would tell you that the Fringe isn't just about Christianity. Fringe is about reaching out to all people. Of course, we're mostly Christians, but not all of us. We have all taken the red pill, and we invite you to do the same. Ranging from the most Holy Spirit infused, biblically solid and spiritually uplifting content to that which crosses the known borders of rational thought into the unknown and little talked about realms of the spirit. Angels, demons, aliens, UFOs, and conspiracies. We talk about them all. Yo, my man. Hey, love it. Bash him. Johnny. This Truth Seeker here. Truthseeker.com. Go check out Truth Seeker. We got everything you're talking about. We are part of the fringe. Make sure you know where to find the truth. Is that truth seeker? And we encourage you to take it all to your good shepherd, Jesus Christ, to unbefuddle your mind. Welcome to the Fringe Radio Network.